Hello and welcome to another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. I'm Wayne Highlander, Director of Sales for Bone Adhesives. I'm Rob Johnson from the Bone Training. How are we, Rob? Oh, very good. Happy Easter. Thank you, sir, very much. Absolutely. Oh, happy and, Easter and, and, coming up. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's around the corner. Hey, um, you know what we didn't talk about the last couple shows? Hmm. You know what episode this is? I, I know. I know it's like over 200 and some odd. This is 252. Two episodes ago. I think it's 252. We did our 250th episode. Golly, that's amazing. I thought we'd have 10 or 12 when we started yeah. this thing. Yeah, yeah. I said, ah, we could probably do 12 podcasts yeah. about sand and floors. That's pretty, pretty remarkable. And not a, not a lot of people celebrate their 252nd uh of anything <laughs> well we just blew past 250 like hey we got yeah yeah we got yeah we're heading to 500 we're gonna be the we're gonna be the gun smoke hmm. of podcasts there you go well uh, yeah the um the what do you call it uh we should be in reruns now actually we are we do a couple reruns here and there we do some uh, reruns yeah because yeah, yeah, we got yeah, pretty yeah. lazy yeah all right uh, well, I'll tell you, I, I, was, I was thinking about you. I called you uh, the other day from the airport. Um, I was at the airport. I was waiting on a plane, and uh, I was watching a video of uh, the guy rescuing a cat. And, I mean, I've ne- you've never seen a cat that looked like it had been run over by a truck, man. It is. It was, it was. I mean, the fur was matted up and everything, and it was just the most hideous. The eyes were glazed over with, with pus and stuff, and it was, you know, emaciated, hadn't eaten everything. And I was I was I was invested in this story, you know, yeah. And um, you know, they finally were able to capture it, and it was shaking and everything. And you know, now I'm I'm hooked. Like, you know, how how's this going to turn out? And and what's it going to look like when they get it done and everything? And they brought it to his house, and he set it down on the hardwood floor, on an H joint. And so I just <laughs> I just swiped forward. I just, <laughs> how well, dare he! I lost Come on, there. man! I went, yeah, then, then I was like, my I went from empathy to disgust. So <laughs> that is such, but that is such a floor man thing. But, uh, well, well, there's only a few people in the world who saw that. Oh yeah, look you know, at uh, that! Hey, the cat's in yeah. death. The cat's near death. I, I, I went from look at the uh, H joint. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> Who would do it? Look at that. Right in front of the entry like that. Stupid. Swipe. And you got to leave the cat on it? Yeah. The cat probably died. Um, <laughs> and while I was at the airport, I recognized something. Uh, um, you ever, you ever, you know, when the escal- escalator going up, you know, you get on that, uh, on the escalator going, uh, you know, from one floor to the next. Yeah. You ever see people take the stairs next to it? Yeah, they're all, better than us. And look they're all smug. Than me. All smug yeah. and everything. Yeah, like people make me sick. <laughs> you know, I think what they don't realize, uh, uh, you go through stages in life. You know what I mean? Yeah. I saw I saw a guy the other day. He was an old older guy, older gentleman. Uh, I mean, very old gentleman. And um, you look at him, and you see an older guy. But I know uh, that in the past he was like a, a a superstar in high school in his day like an absolute superstar. And you look at that, so it's amazing to me, you know what I mean? Like, you see him, pictures of him when he was in high school, and he was a letterman in all kinds of different sports, he was a flat out stud. And now later in life, you look at him, you don't, you, you don't see that about this guy. You know, that's an interesting thing you don't realize as you're younger, you know what I mean? That you'd go through these stages in life and stuff like that. So when you might have been 20 something and looking at guys going up the escalator and thinking you're uh, man, I'll, I'll take the stairs. Look at these, uh, I'm doing something fit and everything. Uh, you, it's interesting how life changes, but I seen the most annoying thing I've ever seen in an airport and Rob, it drove me out of my mind. I almost want to just take another plane going anywhere else. We're captured in this room, right? We can't go anywhere because they're waiting on a plane. There's a man there with his wife. Okay. How this guy is still married. I will never know. What she was doing while we're waiting for the plane was walking laps, right? I mean, you know, you know, you know, like a high school, like a track is like a one one time around is a quarter mile. 
Quarter mile, yeah. She had uh, a lap that one time around was like one thirtieth of a of a mile. You know what I mean? It was like a, it was yeah. just like a little, and she would go up the stairs, up around the corner, come back down. I would, uh, uh, how much can a man take of that? Uh, I mean, we're waiting on the plane for an hour, and a whole hour she's doing that. She's doing that mindless, and I'm sure she's thinking to herself, "Hey, this is an hour I could get in shape." You know what I mean? Yeah. I've never been more annoyed in my life. Yeah. I believe yeah. in the in the in the in the institution of marriage. I really do. I've been married okay. 41 years. But I yeah. think that would be that would be like, okay, that's not acceptable. Yeah, okay. Is it I think that's yeah, that, yeah. So here, here's what I think you should do. And instead of watching all these people mm -hmm. and driving you insane, just just walk down to the store and get a bag of nuts or something. Keep yourself busy. You know what I mean? Stop looking for everybody to piss you off. Just, you know, just go get some nuts or something and or some hard candy to keep yourself busy, you know? Instead of, oh, I like this guy's driving me crazy, that guy's driving. You look you know hard what? enough. You'll you'll be annoyed with everybody, man. Just traveling's tough enough on yourself. You'd be a great life coach. <laughs> you really would. I, I am a great life coach. Not yeah. I would be. Mm -hmm. I am a great life coach. Maybe I'm that coaching, was a... I'm coaching like a dozen lives right now and, and not getting paid for any of it. But hmm. yeah, go get some lifesavers or something. Next time you're feeling all pissed off because yeah. the woman is out there trying to walk because she's going to be cramped up for two hours. I wanted to sit next to him and go, look, man, I know it's none of my business. <laughs> And, and and like she was way more better in shape than her husband was. I just want to go, just be honest with me. That's annoying as hell, right? What she's doing right now? Come on, you know that's annoying, right? Maybe I'll go get some nuts next time. All right, yeah, Rob. Uh, there you go. Well, Wayne, we have a special guest, and this is part three of our ongoing mini series of education. This is the first on the floor mini series. Now we're in episode number three. Today's guest is my one of my most dear friends here at Bona. He's joined the training team. Dittmer, how long have you been on now? Two years? It's two years now. Two years on the two team. I've been a great two years. That, two years since that first trip you and I took to I don't know where the hell it was. And remember when <laughs> We landed in Memphis. It was down and south drove somewhere, into the yeah. Bowels of Mississippi or something. It was. It was. At, at about it was two o'clock in the morning. South it was South Flooring. That's where it was at. That's right. That's right. Well, we have Mike Dittmer on today, like I said, to part three of our education series. And Mike has just taken training out a whole new door. I mean, I remember when we did our our first training with Mike, uh, I think it was maybe a year and a half ago in New Jersey. And I said, I can't believe it, but Bona is now doing install schools. And it just, I mean, it, it, it was time with everything that Highlander's doing with his team. It just seemed like this is definitely the way that we have to go. We got to start doing install schools. And I know, uh, uh, you could just hear the grumblings, I think, in the industry. It was like, great, now Bona's going to do install schools. Is there going to be anything left for anybody else? And the answer is no, we're we're taking over everything. So so take it away, Mike. Well, we, uh, I think it's, you know, it's, it's turning into an adhesive world. And I think that's kind of where, my, where we kind of, where I kind of fit in at with the install schools is, is you know, anything on a slab, Anything that's, you know, wider than four inch, um, it needs to be, you know, put down with the adhesive, whether it be a glue nail assist, a hearing bone parquet, a regular parquet. Um, that's kind of, kind of where I, um, I fill in it. And so typically we'll, um, we'll start out with just a basic, um, glue down nail assist install and we'll kind of go over the NWFA guidelines on um, how to do that properly. And, um, and making sure that your your installation will pass NWFA mustard, so you'll 
you know, you only have to worry about any defects. I mean, from our point of view, uh, with 540, with our um, adhesive, you're, you're not going to have any problems, but just making sure you do everything the right way. Just as far as the straight lay with the blue nail assist, and then um, from there, we kind of, I would say, graduate into uh, a hairy bone layout. Hey, uh, I, I got to stop you for one second. Because I know Wayne, Wayne is still hearing doves fly right now. Mm-hmm. When you said, <laughs> "Well, it's turned into an adhesive world." Look at that! Look at that! I haven't seen him smile like he's smiling right now, Mike. <laughs> I just wish you could see him. It's an adhesive world, and Highlander is right in the middle of it. He's just so happy. I am. So while I can be annoyed at the airport i'm easily amused and pleased <laughs> see <laughs> um mike doing the schools um i mean i yeah I, I don't know what else you can say about mike because I, I he doesn't like to hear it but I, I brag about mike all the time i think i mean he's such a great uh addition to the bona team uh we had um uh, cream on a green on talking about machines uh, before this and now uh, you know our, our wow. team just keeps expanding and, and the, the talent level that we have has been tremendous. And, um, you know, we see trends in the industry, uh, Mike, uh, with herringbone and Chevron and those type of things. And, and um, I think that's why these schools are important. And there's a, there's a lot to be learned from what Mike does. You know, Kareen, yeah, um, we, we had Kareen on and he was talking about his schools. And he said, you know, one of the things I love about uh, the schools that I do is, it's really hands on. He goes, you know, we're not watching a lot of videos and PowerPoints and stuff like that. He goes, it's, it's hands on. And uh, when I was thinking about um, you, Mike, I remember when we did that uh, herringbone layout school in New Jersey, and Mike had the tremble points out, Wayne, and he's showing everybody on the on the main panel how we're going to lay this out and everything he got all the lines laid out he's all done and i thought okay well we're gonna start laying now nope not mike he got a power drive and erased all his lines Hmm. beautiful so you want to talk hands-on that's hands-on now mike stood up and he's like okay now you guys do it you saw how i did it I i thought it was great and so I was like, what the hell is he doing? I thought we were going to start laying. Now I was like, okay, now I get it. Now I see the method to his uh, magic or the magic to his method. Well, and the beautiful part about having Mike do it is Mike has had so much real uh, life experience doing on job sites and all kinds of different challenges and, and uh, that you run into that there's nothing he hasn't seen in his career. Um, and um I just think, you know, even even talking about layout, all these little questions that the the intricate things that make a difference on the pattern and and how you can go quicker, uh, uh, how you can implement some of the new tools and technology. Um, And then you can get into sanding questions and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, bring in our net abrasives and and, uh, what have you to finish them off. I just think it makes for 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 a great class. It does. It kind of showcases all all the the products in our system. Besides, you know, besides talking about how to install a hairy bone floor, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about room scenarios, like how big should the hairy bone pattern should be? I mean, should it be a three by 16, a three by 21, or a, a four by 40? Um, in which direction should the hearing bone go? And so we'll, we'll go through the different um, room scenarios that, you know, a contractor's going to have to have with the customer. So, you know, the customer calls you up and, you know, they've seen a couple magazine pictures of hearing bone floor and they know they just want a hearing bone floor in their dining room and they don't know what species it should be or which direction it should run or how big the pickets should be. And, and, and they're relying upon you to be the expert. And so, so it's, it's, it's building up that confidence in the contractor that they are the expert and, hey, gee, this room is running long ways. The hearing bone picket should go towards that um big screen TV or that beautiful fireplace um, or to that beautiful view over the lake. And, and so it's about, you know, educating the contractor on, on having that conversation with the homeowner uh, to make sure that they um, uh, have, have their presentation down to the client um, for a successful installation. 
Yeah, and, and I know you talk about this, Mike, where some people say, okay, well, I'm going to put a five-inch border around this whole thing. But when you when you lay it out ahead of time or you do some thinking and planning on it, you realize that maybe five inch isn't the way to go. Maybe it makes more sense to go to six inch or four inch, just just depending on how it lays out. Or make making That's those right. or making those last pickets a little bit longer, just customize the last one by an by an inch and a half or so that won't be noticeable rather than having a small piece and uh there's a lot to talk about. A lot of things go into these things and that, and you can you know, you can get into uh, your labor cost for doing a custom floor, like, cause these are highly custom floors, uh, very time consuming custom floors, but especially with the, the adhesive today, um, and the techniques that, that we, you guys go over, I, I think, man, it's just, I think it's a can't miss for the school. No, it's, it's, I think all the students are, when they leave there, they're very appreciative of, of what they've learned and what we've presented to them. So they, you know, they have the confidence to sell the job. They have the confidence to do the job. Yep. So Wayne, tell us about what highlight, uh, what adhesives we're going to highlight at all these schools. Well, I mean, you know, that, that, obviously it's going to be Bona Flow or it's going to be the 851. Um, what's, I mean. But I think you also, we can show the vertical. For your starters, yeah. For the starters, yep, yeah, absolutely. We can show the R five forty, yep. For the the mitigation system, I mean, we can just tie all sorts of things up with that. Yeah, with, every, with just about all of your products. Yeah, it all comes into play, and then uh, you talk about the the some of the track saws and that kind of stuff, and um, uh, how that can that can help, and then you splining the putting a border and splining everything. I think all that, all, you know, it's one thing to talk about it and, and lay it out and look at it or read about it, but to get your hands on it and get on your hands and knees and, and actually do it and where you come across some of the challenges, uh, then I, it puts a whole different paint job on it. And then when you leave there, uh, most of us, most of us learn by actually doing it. I, I, I'm, I'm a visual guy or whatever, but you, if I can get put my hands on it and do it a little bit, whatever. And then it, it always clicks with me and then I can take that to my next job. But if I read about it in, in a, in, you know, in a, in, you know, and try to, you know, get it off of reading it, sometimes it's, it's, it's much more difficult. So yeah, there's, we're doing these classes across the country. You know, I know we have a few coming up. We're going to be doing one in Texas here and a couple other places across the country in uh, California. If you're interested in going to one of these classes, you can certainly get a hold of me or Rob or Mike or uh, one of your territory manager. And uh, love to have you on board for it, um, Mike. W while you're there, with, with people have questions about other pattern floors, can you get into some of those? Uh, talk about those, or like a round, round pattern floor or a basket weave? And oh, talk about yes, yes. So what we'll do is we'll, um, we'll 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 start it as a herringbone because that's kind of a I don't know it's, it's kind of a generic thing to start with, and and you can go to most distributors and buy herringbone tickets right off the shelf. And so that's kind of a good intro. And then we'll, we'll go into um, how to make a ROMS pattern, how to make a Monticello pattern, or even how to make a, a head and hall pattern. And, and we'll uh, show the guys on how to um, build a jig to go on the table saw to do repetitive pieces to make their own hearing bones. Say they have, I don't know, say they had a customer that just wanted two and a quarter select the right floor, but they didn't want any boards under three foot long installed in their floor. And so the contractor's left with, you know, four or 500 feet of shorts. So it's like, we'll, we'll show them jigs they can put on the table saw, jigs they can put on the miter saw that they can build, that they can, can make parquet patterns out of. And, and it might be something where you say, ah, that's a pretty cool pattern. Well, let me make a hundred of those patterns and put it in the warehouse or put it in the corner of the shop and throw one in the truck finish as a sample. And so then when you go on that estimate and, you know, you, the customers hemming and hawing, whether they want to pick you or, or, you know, or, you know, Tom's floor service, you can bring in that parquet and you can say, Hey, you know what? We can drop a, I don't know, an eight by eight parquet rug in the middle of your foyer here. And, and you know what, if you do the whole job, I'll just give you that parquet. Yeah. Uh, good, good, good point. Especially, yeah, you're a lot of your, uh, I seen a guy do a floor the other day that was all leftovers. And it's beautiful. It was just beautiful. It was all leftover material. So he's not, you're not having to pay for the material on the, on the job. 
what what are some mistakes that that you th- you see guys use doing uh, Mike on uh, herringbone? I would probably say the the first mistake, and and this happened when we did a school in Toronto about um, a month or so back, is um, to get too many guys involved at at, at um, doing the center lines in the starting line. You know, it should be one guy and one tape measure marks the line to start the herringbone in the middle of the floor. Um, each hear, each tape measure measures a little bit differently. Um, and um, if you get, get two or three guys involved in determining what the center point is of that parquet pattern, um, you know, one guy might see five sixteenths, the other guy might see five eighths on his tape measure, and then they chalk to, you know, divide that in half, and then they chalk that line, and it's only off, of, you know, maybe on that length of six foot, it's only off um, three-eighths of an inch. But, man, once you uh, multiply it by, I don't know if the room is 14 foot wide, now your pickets could be off an inch, inch and a half from the left to the right. Yep. And so, uh-huh. so you need to pay attention to, you know, your measurements from your initial run. You know, you measure – you double check it two or three times to make sure your your starting line is perfect. So I'll tell you a real quick story. Uh, Johannes Boonstra, uh, I think that's how you pronounce the last name. Uh, we're, 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 we get along really well. We talk, he's a competitor of ours, but he's, he's a great guy. And we, you know, I respect him. And we were at an NWFA class one time and you know, your, your point, uh, Mike, about several people making the measurements. You know, you got five guys there, and different guys are measuring different things and whatever, and they snap a line, and then uh, get ready for layout. And then there was lunchtime. When I when I checked the tape measure, it was like an inch and a half off from one side to the other. And 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 me and me and Johannes were looking at, it, and he goes, Yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's it's uh, it's off, isn't it? I go, Yeah. He goes, Oh shoot, now, what, what what are we gonna do about that now? So we're scratching our head. It was lunchtime. I said, Here, no problem. So I took a screw gun and I, I unscrewed the wall and moved the wall in an inch and a half on that side. Go, hey, problem solved. Let's go to lunch. You can't, oh, boy. you can't do that on a job site. That's why my son calls us panel kings now. You're panel yeah. kings. Yeah, easy to do on a panel when you can do you can jockey stuff around. Panel king. You know, Mike, uh, you're really turned into a thorn in my side. I mean... Uh, I love that you're on the team. You have just brought the best free agent signing ever, I said to D. <laughs> uh, you just completely opened up training to a whole new world. But you're making my life miserable, okay? I've got guys now who, because uh, he mentioned Toronto, so I got to go to, to Toronto. I got guys who have never ran a machine in their life. Half a dozen of them at the school. And we're walking into Mike's beautiful chevron patterns and parquet panels and herringbone. Like I said, you guys are really learning real world stuff now. Okay, we're not starting with straight lace stuff for you guys. This is this is the real world. So get your act together. But the worst part is the kid up there, Darren Webb. Awesome, awesome kid. Love working with this guy. Okay. But all he talked about was how nice Mike is, how Mike doesn't yell at him, how Mike doesn't make oh, him boy. feel bad, how he the whole time he was waiting for Mike to start yelling or, you know, trashing him or something. And he's like, he's just so much nicer than you. He goes, I just didn't know what to do. I didn't. I, he goes, I thought I, I just kept waiting for it to happen, but it, it never did. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. Well, well, he's from the he's from the Midwest. So. He's he's not always that nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I I, uh, I I called Mike and because uh, we're going to go do a herringbone class. I may have been the first one or whatever. And I I say, Mike, listen, I know this is your deal, and you can tell me to get back in my lane. But you know, I'm what I'm thinking of maybe you can also show the guys how to make their own homemade track saw uh, on site. You know, <laughs> they don't have a festival. And he said, um, yeah, get back in your lane. Uh, <laughs> I got this covered. I go, all right, yeah, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Wayne. I just said, I just, it is what it is. You get, in order to do quality, you need quality equipment to do a quality job. That's just it. 
No, you're right. I was, I was, it was out of my lane. (laughs) So somebody uh, told, somebody told Wayne to get back in his lane. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Um, I guess that's how you, uh, floor of the year guys can talk to each other. Oh boy! Hear that? Oh, listen. Hear it? There, there it is. There, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, Mike, uh, do you also talk about um, how the the amount of time and labor and charge? I mean, we can't, nor do we want to tell people what to charge for doing their work. But maybe, uh, do you go into that a little bit about the amount of time it takes to do these jobs and and uh, and uh, uh, on logistics and bidding these jobs on in your classes? I, I will. I will. I'll go on. I'll discuss, you know, that, hey, you need to figure, like, for example, I had a gentleman call me just last week, uh, a couple days ago, about how to bid a job. It's a job he's never done before. And I'm like, I'm like, you got to figure out, you know, what you, what you need to make for you and your employees, whether it be two or three guys, what you need to make for a day. And what, what you want is your profit for that job. And how many days is it going to take you to do it? And um, you need to take all those things into consideration um, when you're doing and, and pricing out uh, any type of a parquet floor because it's not like a wham bam thank you ma'am job. It's uh, it's we're taking our time. We're cutting borders out. We're you know gonna we're gonna spend a lot of extra time, a lot more time than a straight lay um, during our sanding process. Um, we might try to fill that floor twice because you know it's a. It's gonna it's it's gonna cost double or triple that of a straight lay, so you know the customers' ex- expectations are gonna go that up that much higher. They're gonna they're gonna want a tabletop finish on that floor, so there there's not as much room for error or acceptability of errors in a parquet floor as that in a um, strip floor. So so we need to take that in consideration when we're judging how much time uh, and what we're gonna charge for that job. And Mike, let, let me, I'm going to go throw devil's advocate at you. I, I really want to do one of these jobs. Um, I'm, I'll be excited to do it, but I get there and the subfloor is really pretty un, uneven. Give me your, give me your uh, two cents on it. You're going to have to have that conversation with the customer that you need to, um, we, we need to fix the subfloor. We can't install this job. And um, here it, it's not up to NWPA specifications. And, um, we're going to have to uh, you know, charge you extra in order to, to do it. I mean, because it's, it's like uh, we don't, you know, my, my dad's motto is, is we don't go to work to, uh, for free. We go to work to make money. And, and you, if, you, if you don't have the ability to determine what that stuff is uh, when you um, do that job, say it's covered with carpet, you want to make sure you write a little notation um, in your post covers your butt that way. So if you pull up the carpet and, and there's wet plywood or there's sagging plywood in one corner of the room that, uh, you know, the customer's aware that you might have to charge, you know, whatever, five, seven hundred dollars to to, um, to level that out, um, to um, add additional layer of plywood, use some self-leveling or whatever you might need to do in order to, to make it an acceptable um, subfloor for you to install that parquet on. Uh, uh, yes. And I'm going to say this, Mike, is that especially with a pattern floor like this, where the with the subfloor is uneven, it can walk. The pattern can 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 walk on you. Um, and also, I'll tell you something else. We've gone to super wide plank floors too, and these wide plank floors don't bridge those things uh, as they don't contour to the slabs uh, as easy as a thinner board. So even on those wide plank floors, you really want to make sure you get them subfloors flat. You do because you'll get hollow spots. Yep. Yep. Hey, Mike, I got to ask a personal question. Uh, how old are you? I am 59. You're 59. Okay. Yes, sir. Because you just said a, a, a phrase that I haven't heard in a long time. That's why I had to think, oh, oh my gosh, he's got. Oh, he's showing my age, huh? <laughs> yeah, showing your age. Wayne, when's the last time you heard anybody say, Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. When's the last time you heard that? <laughs> I, I, I cringe That's a little been bit. A, huh? Yeah. I, yeah. It's been a, I don't know when I've heard that last. Come on. When's yeah, the last yeah. time you heard somebody say that? You, you gotta love this guy. Yeah. You see? <laughs> this is it. You don't get this stuff at anybody else's schools. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. What? 
That's in a song. What what song is that? <laughs> right. I don't know. It's in a song, Wayne. I don't know. I don't know. Come on. I said I don't know. I know you don't, but you're not thinking. <laughs> who's who's very Ziggy familiar. Stardust? What's his name? Oh, uh, Iggy Pop. Talk about Iggy no, Pop. I don't think it's. Oh, uh, uh, Wayne. Yeah, it's 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 not. Uh, it's not. Suffragette City. Yeah, I know where you go. Suffragette it, City. It's, yeah. it's not. Yeah. Uh, it's it's. it's um, oh man. I know the guy. Eileen, help you know, us, it, Chris. You think, you think about David Bowie? David Bowie, I think that's okay. it. He sang um, Suffragette City, right? Isn't that the name of the song? Yeah, Suffragette City. You know, um, and that wham bam, thank you, ma'am, is in that song. Yes, you're 100 percent right. Uh, the other guy I mentioned, um, uh, I can't remember the guy's name. I said now, um, uh, Iggy Pop. Iggy Pop. Do you know I I I, I kicked him. <laughs> you kicked him. Wow. I swear to God, I did. I kicked him as hard as I could. <laughs> oh you my did God. Not. No I, way. God strike me dead. You did not. I tell you what, I did. I absolutely <laughs> did. I, I kicked him as hard Iggy as I could. Iggy Pop the singer. In his butt. At his <laughs> yes. Oh my God. I hope he's not listening to this. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, let me and tell you why, what happened. I got that. Oh, please. Oh, yeah, I'll tell you why. Yeah. I go, okay, I'm new to California, right? I came from Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I go to this concert in Berkeley. It's a small venue. Iggy Pop is going to be there. I really don't know who the guy is, you know, but I thought, oh, cool, you know, concert, you know, whatever, I go there. I go there. Guy comes out with no shirt on. He's skinny as can be, right? Comes out with no shirt on. He starts spitting on people in the audience. <laughs> Now, he's not spitting on me. I'm in the back. But I thought, what kind of man would spit on someone like that? You know what I mean? And I, I was kind of <laughs> disgusted with him. I just had a, a brand, new hike, <laughs> brand new hiking boots, like you, we, kids used to wear back then. Yeah. Anyhow, concert's over, everybody's whatever. And he kind of comes through the crowd. And, I, and I, I, I kick him as hard as I can. And the dude next to me goes, hey, man, that's not cool. <laughs> <laughs> like, like like it wasn't cool so. all right now i there's two ways to kick somebody in the a yeah you know you're hitting the fat part of the cheek no problem <laughs> but did you do a, a tailbone kick no i got him in the, in the meat of his, of his of his butt which is there's not a lot there believe me and there was some like okay. it's, it's like big dudes with him, like pushing him forward and everything and like a dude yeah. turned back and looked but it was too late all right, you, you did. You didn't do your job, number one. And then uh, so, so you in the beginning of the show, he's spitting at people. Yeah, spitting on people. Show's over, and he's walking through the crowd. Show's yeah, done. He's, he's sweating and everything, and, and he's going and through the you crowd. You just the whole show has been spoiled because he was spitting at people, just like the lady in the airport who you was should. doing laps, driving Look, you crazy. You uh, see the pattern here? I, I see I'm, it. I'm, Who's wrong? Let it go. <laughs> I'm Let just trying, it to, go. Trying, trying to make the world a better place. Well, you know what? <laughs> For all the people who are listening to the show who got spit on by Iggy Pop. I got you. Wayne got you. Okay. Yeah. Get, everybody give him a, a thumbs up. There you go. <laughs> you get Iggy Pop. Every time I... Highlander, actually, I Highlander I, you never cease to amaze me absolutely little, never cease to amaze me it's a little things you know who's gonna love this pauline is gonna love this story hmm. she and especially for the reason that you did it you weren't yeah. being a punk no you, you no were, no no absolutely you were being not. a punk you being no. a hero I, I, thank you thank now you. i'm hearing that yeah. song i need a hero i was it and you know it's hard to be a hero when in a room full of de degenerates you know what I mean? <laughs> and not you, Mike. You're fine. No, no, I would say you were part of the crowd, Wayne, so I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope Iggy right. Pop's people aren't hearing this because they're gonna they're definitely gonna sue you now. Now he's, we he's now that little. we know who who kicked Iggy yeah. Pop. All right. Well, Mike, 
uh thank you again for coming on uh if i know you're doing classes out there if anybody wants to get in touch and i'll tell you mike is a master and every time we do one of these classes the, the feedback isn't great it's off the charts it's off the charts on, on 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 how well you do and how and how knowledgeable you are and everybody else. I didn't know where you was going with that one, Mike. That didn't, that's, no, <laughs> yeah, and, I didn't know either. Wow, I was like, whoa. Yeah, no, no, the, it's off the it's absolutely off the charts, and everybody always says, "When can you come back?" So um, thank you uh, for all you do, Mike, and uh, and being a, a knowledgeable and a resource for us. And you've helped us on on some of the other stuff we've done. I've worked together with you on a couple panels I had the privilege to work with you on some really nice stuff and um just being around you just you just exude excellence man i mean just you learn just being around you so thank you for all you do for us no you're very welcome and thank you for the opportunity wayne it's just uh for me it's fun it's, it's fun for me to, to 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 install and work with the wood floors it's fun for me to work with the students and to to help them along the way to to help them refine their craft and so to me it's a, it's a lot of fun to to see their growth and to help them along the way. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Hey, you're welcome. Have a happy Easter, everyone. You too. You too, Mike. Thanks, and, Mike. And you too. This has been another episode of On the Floor with Wayne and Rob. Please stay tuned for another episode. Oh, yeah.